Hello, friends. So, wow. We all have our challenges in life, don't we? I think many of us realise now we, we carry, can we call them issues from, from childhood and from our life experiences. And it can be very difficult to understand how do we address this? How do we shake it off? What is, for example, an energy parasite? Um, I've got a wonderful guest who's going to explain all this for us. And give, give us some phenomenal life tips. Let's get into it. Laura, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? Yes, I'm phenomenal. So happy to have this chat. Um, so, Laura, your organisation is Soul Centre Healing. Have I got that right? That's correct. Soul Centre Healing Hypnosis. Yes. And one of your um, colleagues or acquaintances, should we say, got in touch with me to, um, because... They know I do a lot of work around veterans healing, the veterans mental health ep epidemic that we're, we're experiencing. Um, hence, friends, why well, I'm going to be rowing the Atlantic at the end of the year, but we won't talk about that now. And I went onto your channel and I just found it amazing how those of us that have been around the block a bit, we all come to the same place of knowledge maybe slight frame slightly differently you know obviously because none of us have ever met but um and yet yeah, i was um humbled to have you on the show and if i just lay out my table very quickly laura I remember somebody left a comment in one of my YouTube videos once where I was talking about my crystal meth addiction and I was in complete psychosis, so complete mental Ill, 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 illness, or certainly I was phasing in and out of complete men, mental illness. And and I described it as, oh, I'd overloaded my brains with the chemical and the, the synapses were no longer sort of firing right, like a sort of scientific explanation. And someone left a comment and went, no, Chris, you, you let you let the gin in. Gin being dark entities, dark energy. Uh, and I didn't know anything about this then, Laura. I, I looked at it, I thought, that's a bit, that's just a bit, you know, right of feel for me. And yet my journey now has brought me to chatting to wonderful people like uh, Jerry Marzinski, just showing a picture. There's Jerry, folks, my podcast with Jerry, which was incredibly um, uh, popular. And Jerry worked worked in mental health or what we used to refer to as um, psychiatry. I think Americans still tend to be a bit behind us, don't they, with their terminology as well. So they probably still do call it psychiatry. Um, and he was like bang on that point he was like we're trying to treat people with medicine whereas what we need to do is look at where these entities are attaching themselves to a person generally from as a result of childhood tra trauma and they're kind of sucking the person's energy away um and causing them to you know for their thoughts to be in, in chaos I'm, I'm i'm not doing a good job of describing it here but that was that and then i chatted to a guy that i introduced as britain's hardest man and, and at first he didn't like that and then i was like jeff jeff i'm coming on to say that that was your old self britain's hardest bounce i mean jeff thompson here very super chap absolutely a brilliant conversation he was a bouncer for many years somewhere in the north of England. And, and he said, Chris, every night it was a fight. Every night I was looking at someone thinking, how am I going to disable you 
through, through the most extreme form of violence I can muster. He said, everywhere I went, I had weapons in my cars. Um, you know, I had dark thoughts. I was going home and I was, you know, watching pornography on all night online and, and da, da, da. And he said, and I couldn't work out why, why was it like extreme violence always followed me around? And then, of course... He looked in the mirror one day and went, ah, right, I think I know who, wh who is the, you know, what's that word, the, you know, which part of this equation <laughs> is causing this? And uh, Jeff was a, a, a super guy. Um, I don't want to say reformed character because I believe we're all, you know, life's just a journey, isn't it? It's all one experience and we move through different phases and we move on to being far more actualized. Um, beings that, that live in, you know, we start to control the energy, dare I say, manipulate the energy for, for the greater good rather than letting it control us and we all become angry and drinking too much and in Jeff's case, um, violent. So the one thing that Jeff said is he said, I was possessed by a parasite and I don't know, Laura, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you this. But he said, Chris, I had an energy parasite sitting in me. And it was, you know, if I wasn't violent, I wasn't feeding it what it wanted from me. Um, and it wasn't until I exercised that, that de demon, as it, as, it, as it were, that, that th things started to change around. So my first question there, Laura, is... When people talk about dark entities and demonoids, and I, I don't know if reptilians is the same thing. I know in scripture they, there's a lot of reference to this sort of, sort of thing. And parasites. Are we talking like a sort of, you know, is this just words we've come up with to describe like the energy frequencies in life. What what I mean is there'll be people watching now that go, oh God, Chris and Laura actually think they have a parasite sat in their stomach Can I, and they're going to switch this podcast off, which is a real shame. But, and, and so I just wanted to get you some sort of clarity on, on what your thoughts on that were. Absolutely. I'd love to share my thoughts. Mm. <laughs> okay. So, for people that haven't come across me before, my name is Laura Whitworth. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and psychotherapist, and I'm an entity releasement specialist. I fell into that work through being a hypnotherapist and psychotherapist. It's not like I chose um, as my dream job as a child to grow up and be a demon slayer uh, or remove energetic parasites. This is not the occupation that I would have chosen for myself, but somewhere along the line, source or God led me to this occupation. So what I do for a living now is I work with thousands of people all over the world. I have a global hypnotherapy school training thousands of people over the world to identify and remove energetic parasites from our clients, from people. And our people will say, well, what do you mean, energetic parasites? What does that even mean? So I'm going to try very quickly and succinctly to explain it. So we as humans have been told that we ha we are this physical body. This meat suit is what we are. And, you know, the meat suit's got to look good and you've got to have this particular materialistic thing and this particular car and this particular home. And um, we need to look and be in a certain way. But what we're not told as human beings is that we're so much more than that. We have a mental body. So all of the thoughts that we think, that's where everything begins. It all begins with consciousness. It all begins with thought. From those thoughts, we then have an emotional body. So the thoughts that we think then create emotions within us as beings. We are emotional creatures, emotional beings. And we can feel positively polarized emotions, so happiness, joy, uh, elation. 
And we can feel negatively polarized emotions, such as sadness, uh, grief, jealousy, fear, all those kinds of things. There's a, a huge spectrum of emotions that we can feel. We also have an energetic body. So what's an energetic body? Our body needs energy to fuel it in order for our physical avatar to be able to exist in this realm. We as humans are a part of the earth. So we're not something that's separate from it. And this is what many humans think. Many humans think, oh, we rule the earth. We own this piece of land. That's mine. I own this. When in actual fact, when you look at it, if you look at the shape of the bronchial tubes in the lungs, they are the shape of a tree. The air that we breathe out is what the trees need to um, conduct their photosynthesis processes. The oxygen that the trees breathe out is what we need to be alive and exist. We are exactly the same as a tree. The only difference is our root is not fixed into the earth in a fixed point. Where humans differ is we can move around the earth and take our energy around the earth. And wherever we go, dependent upon how we are in terms of our energy as a human, we're going to either raise the light frequency in that area of the earth or we're going to take away from it, dependent upon how we are polarized as a human being, whether we're positively polarized or negatively polarized. So we have these energy centers as a human. We have the root chakra that's at the base of the spine that's responsible for you feeling safe and secure. When that root chakra is affected negatively, you begin to feel fear. You begin to feel as if you're unsupported, as if you are not safe. You've got the sacral chakra that's to do with joy and passion and creativity. And the inversion of that, if you like, is feeling sad, is feeling suppressed, is feeling depressed. And then you've got, I'm just going to go through the, the, the bottom three chakras to, to further my uh, explanation. You've got the solar plexus chakra, which is responsible for confidence. It's responsible for your sense of self, for you feeling um, strong and confident in your life. Now, what happens to us as humans is we're born into this highly toxic world that's set up in compartments to traumatize us. The social systems, um, you know, gender, country, societal level, every area within life on this planet in human land is designed to traumatize us and break us down so that our energy no longer vibrates as safe and secure, joyful, confident, but it begins to vibrate at the inversion of that, the negative polarity. So why would that happen? Why would that occur? Why would the world be set up in that way to traumatize humans all over the globe and keep us in fear, keep us sad, keep us focused on low frequency things like sex, pornography, and keep us unconfident, keep us addicted to substances. Well, there's one reason, one reason only for that. And that is because our world is so much more than we have been told. There is not just our physical dimension that exists on the earth. There are other dimensions, other frequencies of being on this planet. There is a positively polarized upper fourth density. That positively polarized upper fourth density contains beings like fairies, um, dragons, unicorns, all of the things that we are taught about in myth and legend. You know, these creatures aren't real. They're not real. They're spoken about all over the globe. Uh, in multiple places, in old documentation, uh, there's actual drawn pictures of these beings. Some countries actually use them on their flags, but they're not real. They're just myth and legend. And then you have the negatively polarized upper fourth density. And these beings 
are parasitical in nature because on the negative path, the dark ones have to feed off of something underneath them. Even though they have chosen the polarity of the dark, they have to be anchored to a light source in order to be able to survive. So what you've got is a whole boatload of humans on this planet now that are very, very traumatized. All of their energy centers are vibrating lower. So where is the frequency of their energy centers? And I'm just going to reach for this uh, very, very quickly just to show the colors of the rainbow. The frequencies of their energy centers should vibrate at these colors of the rainbow through the seven main energetic centers in the body. But you imagine being in fear as a child at a, a spot of black paint to the root. This makes you feel sad because you're in fear at a spot of black paint to the sacral. Your parents are bullies or you're bullied by an overbearing sibling or you're bullied by um, a teacher or a sports coach or um, the organization that you work for bully you. You add some black paint to the solar plexus and you do that for every single bit of trauma that you have experienced as a human being on this journey so far. And then you stir those parts so you stir the pot of red paint, you stir the pot of orange paint, and so on and so forth. What you are left with is black, no frequency light, no vibrational light in the human body. And then these negatively polarized beings in the negatively polarized upper fourth density, they then are attracted in by our fears, by our sadness, by our lack of confidence, by our being suppressed at the throat. And their food source is the light in your chakras that is now vibrating low enough for them to be able to attach and take it. And so that applies to pretty much every human being on this planet at this point. Every human being on this planet has been suppressed and had trauma. Black spots of paint go into their rainbow that has made their rainbow dark, low frequency, vibrating low. Once these negatively polarized energies that do exist, and I see them in my third eye day in, day out on clients because I can actually see them. When they attach to your energetic body, dependent upon where they attach, not only do they take your energy, causing physical disease in the body in that area, but they also then affect your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, and your energy. So where you may have been confident before, you had a trauma that took your confidence, the entity attaches, now, all of a sudden, overnight, you're no longer confident. You no longer have that confidence in yourself. And it affects your thoughts because the entity is then attached to you in consciousness. As soon as they attach to you energetically, they affect your thoughts. And that's why many, many people will talk about um, hearing voices and I know you had Jerry Mazinski on your um, channel, who you who you mentioned earlier. I myself um, am friends with Jerry. We've worked together, and everything that he says about the things that he has experienced, I've experienced as well. We we just we've seen both sides of the coin because he's seen um, the edge of it where he's working in that prison system, and he's seen how the entities are affecting people. I'm coming at it from the energetic perspective. So I see in my business with the clients that I help and um, help to heal, I see energetically how these entities get in, how they attach and how they affect the emotions, feelings and behaviors of each and every human. An example of that, a human that's constantly anxious will have a root parasite and they will have got that root parasite because at some point in their life they were put into absolute abject terror or fear. They felt the emotion of abject terror or fear or they had a divorce or a loved one died or they lost their home 
or they went bankrupt, they lost all of their finances. So then this root parasite gets in when the vibration of the energy in the root vibrates lower, it attaches to the root. And then from that point onwards, that person will never be able to step out of that anxiety. So same with the sacral chakra. So the place where you're supposed to feel happiness and joy. Something occurs in your life that makes you feel sad, that makes you feel depressed, that makes you feel low. Your sacral chakra begins to vibrate lower. An entity comes in and attaches. And from that point on, you will never be able to shake that sadness off. You will never be able to shake it. And as soon as I connect with people who are clients, I can feel that vibration in their energy. They're sad. That's the overwhelming feeling that you get, sadness. So that tells me they have no orange light going into their rainbow, into their spectrum. And the reason they have no orange light is because they've got a sacral parasite, so on and so forth up the energetic body. And I could go through all of that, but you asked me to give you a brief synopsis. So your friend who is the bouncer, he will have attracted in through the necessity of, okay, I can't feel fear in this situation. I've got to react first. I've got to get in there. I've got to neutralize these people. He attracts in a really dark parasite that feeds off of the energetic release that releases through the chakras when he is beating somebody up or when he's using the most extreme force necessary. And that individual will be parasited upon in their solar plexus because it's confidence. It's the confidence to do that. Probably in their sacral chakra as well, that will be connected to the pornography. And their root chakra in terms of having to fight for your life day in, day out for your job, fight or flight. So we end up attracting in these darker energies because of the emotions and the situations that we are in on earth. Now, years ago, that's why unicorns and fairies and all of these beautiful beings exist in our myth and legend. Years ago, humans, we didn't used to treat each other in this way. We didn't used to be violent. We used to be peaceful, harmonious beings. And I'm talking right the way back, not just, you know, fairly recently. And so we used to vibrate and be more in alignment with the positively polarized upper fourth density. What has happened over time is humanity have fallen our emotions have fallen. We spend more time looking at the negative in this world and connecting with it than we do the positive. And because of that, because there's been a shift in us energetically, now we plug up into the negatively polarized upper fourth density and these beings feed off of us just as we feed off of the dimensions below us, you know, the animal kingdom, and we need the water and we need the grass and we need the soil, you know, the first, the second and the third dimensions. That's how all of this is stacked up. So from a universal perspective, if, we, if we're taking it right the way up into the quantum, the universe has two avenues of expression. It has the positive polarity and the negative polarity, white and black, light and dark, those two together. And in the lower dimensions, both of those polarities are allowed because they contrast each other. They provide a catalyst. They provide a charge for the growth of the soul. That's why light and dark are allowed. What humans have not realized up to this point is that the planet that we live on or the world that we live in, however you choose to view that, the place where we live, the darker polarity has held the energy of this space. What is happening now is people are waking up to that and it's providing a catalyst for change. And people are thinking, wow, this world is really dark. Why is all of these things happening? Why, why is this, why are wars still happening? Have we not learned anything from this? 
you start to line all of this stuff up and you think, oh, okay. So actually this place is dark then. Right. We weren't aware of that. And you're seeing pockets of light beginning to grow all over the world where humans are realizing we don't want that. We don't want to be living on a dark planet under dark control with dark rulers who plug into dark galactic beings. We want to be free. And so we're all coming together in our little groups. We're all talking about this stuff. We're all helping each other to heal. We're all explaining how this works. And gradually, the light is also beginning to build on this planet. And at a certain point, there will be a tipping point that is reached. And once that tipping point is reached, the light will spread and the darkness cannot stay where the light is so bright. It cannot stay. And that's what I'm here for on this planet at this time, is this revolution, if you like, that we're going through. So I hope that kind of explains what you asked. How is it that people can have energetic beings attached to us? How is it that we can think we've got a parasite? Many people, if not all people at this point, will have something because of the nature of the world and how it's set up. Laura, let's come on because I guess the question on all of our lips is for those of us that have experienced, you know, when you said that extreme terror, I know there's people watching now, including myself. I, I know exactly what you mean. Um, we'll come on, obviously, to see how that can be healed or ame excuse me, ameliorated at, 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 at least. Uh, can we talk about your journey? How did you... Uh, I mean, my journey, very quickly, you know, I was a child of the Matrix, um... I, I had a funny, I was enlightened before I was awakened, which is kind of funny. A lot of people, this last three years of, uh, let's just call it nonsense, you know, it's woken a lot of people up and now they're on that journey into the light. And this is what, what I try and help people on my channel um, to realise, you know, it's the work is within, not trying to change everyone out, out there, right? My... I was the other way round. I, I, I got so desperately ill, lonely, tired, s literally physically starving at one point um, through addiction that I sort of couldn't go any lower. I, I, well, it wasn't working for me anymore. And, and I, um, I made two, basically two decisions. One is I was going to start you know, that terrified child, I was going to start looking after that kid because that kid's me, you know. I got no, I can't, I can blame this person, blame that, but who who's sticking the drugs in this kid now? It's me. And I, yeah. and I realise, hang on, it starts with love, doesn't it? You've got love yourself. Forgive Absolutely. the past. To forget all, just, just love that, you know, love that little kid who experienced stuff that wasn't pleasant. And that was one thing. Then it was like, I'm not being a victim anymore. I can see now that they were in this beautiful creation called, called life. And I was being victimized by it. I was like, it's doing to me. Recording stopped. Oh, sorry. Uh, just one second. Oh, it's saying recording. Oh, 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 sorry. Technology. <laughs> it's saying we haven't got any disk space. Laura, one second. No problem. Yes. Sorry, folks. I had a bit of a technical glitch. I was saying that, you know, I learned to love myself. I, I learned to uh, gratitude, Laura, for this life. And I... I decided, and I don't mean this to upset anyone, but I wasn't going to be the victim that I, that, that I could see now. And um, 
that brought me into the light. I mean, I physically woke up the next day and I knew my life was different and it was never, never going to be the same again. I just had that lovely glow that, you know, didn't have to prove myself to no, no one, didn't have to have the fast car, didn't have to have the, the job. or it, None of that mattered. My life was for me. And, and then funnily enough, it wasn't for another, like, seven years or something and and um those what we refer to as the events in new york and washington 20 years ago that actually woke me up so i become enlightened and then i got woke up <laughs> seven years later um so your journey how, can i ask you about that laura sure um so i haven't always been a hypnotherapist or a psychotherapist um Back in the day, years ago, I first started out in, um, I got into banking, then I got into recruitment. Um, I always felt very, very different from other people. And I came from a background in terms of my ancestry, if you like, my parents, my upbringing, that was heavily traumatic, huge amounts of trauma um, in my lineage, in my family. And um, it wasn't until we got to, I think it was 2010, so before 2012. And at that point, I started to have very, very different things happening to me. I began to wake up and I began to see visions just out of nowhere. Like literally, I'd be sat in a business meeting that was really boring, you know, and your mind tends to wander. And I'd start to see visions in here, that's all I could say, in here, of other places, other worlds. I used to see um, the universe talking to itself and talking about deciding to divide into light and dark. Let's play this game. Let's see what happens. And at the time, I, I kind of thought to myself, I think I'm losing it. I think I'm having some kind of a breakdown. Uh, it's all going horribly wrong. You know, I'm really quite high up in this corporate structure. And all of a sudden, none of this really matters to me at all anymore. And at that point, I decided I don't want to do this anymore. Don't know why. But I want to step off this treadmill and uh, start a family. I want to do something different. And it was the starting of the family that really broke me open because unbeknownst to me at the time, I I was carrying a huge entity, really, really big entity that had been carried ancestrally down my family lineage, very big one, um, that was probably sent to snuff me out, to be fair, because of who I've turned out to be. Um, but this entity nearly killed me. Uh, I nearly died when I had my first child. And it was through that process of uh, nearly dying and the entity thinking that I had died and leaving me that then all of my chakras, all of my energy fired up. Everything started to come out, all of the trauma, um, all of the ancestral trauma. And I had a huge Kundalini awakening. So the energy literally came from my root all the way up to my head. And you know that um, what you hear the yogis talk about where you've got enlightenment, you've got the white light inside, but your eyes are closed. That's literally what happened. So overnight after having my first child, all of a sudden, wide awake, third eyes working, everything's firing on full cylinders. And so at that point, I retrained, became a hypnotherapist, clinical hypnotherapist and psychotherapist. But I knew that wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. I was supposed to be looking at what was going on up here and these visions I was having in the quantum space. So I trained in quantum hypnotherapy and I started to hypnotize hundreds of people, which turned into thousands of people over the years through quantum hypnotherapy. And then I started to get clients coming to see me that when I would hypnotize them would act very different, they'd act very strange. They'd been really polite and nice and kind of meek and mild uh, in the psychotherapy part of the session. But as soon as I hypnotized them, they started to swear at me. They started to tell me to F off. They'd spit, literally spit at me. I once had one guy levitate up off the bed 
and I swear to God, and this was a face-to-face -face session. So he was in my house, laid on the bed, I'd hypnotized him and I was trying to take him into the quantum space in regression. And the entity that was attached to him would not let me do it and told me in no uncertain terms, this guy is mine, stop this session now. So at that point, I had to try and make sense of what was occurring. And at the time, there was no training out there whatsoever about this stuff. There was nothing. I literally looked all the way out through the space and there was nowhere I could go to for training. So I read all of the books on, you know, demonic possession and anything that there was out there, absorbed it all. And I started to think, right, I'm going to have to train myself. And from that point on, every single client that came to see me had a demon or an, a parasite attached or a reptilian or AI or something. They had something attached. So I would map down the thoughts that the client had, the emotions and the feelings that they said they were struggling with, the physical symptoms they had in the body, map all of that down and then compare it to the voices that would come out of them that weren't theirs under hypnotherapy and where those voices were in the body so where they told me they were attached and I started to build up this picture that oh <laughs> there's another dimension on this planet where beings exist and we are their food source and it's through trauma and addiction and fear and sadness and grief and being suppressed and dominated and controlled. It's all of these negatively polarized emotions that when our light lowers in frequency, when we feel these emotions, it's what allows these entities to plug into us. And so I started to build up this body of evidence and research and I tested it and I tested it and tested it on thousands of clients until I was absolutely sure yes, this is what's going on. This is what these entities are. I've catalogued all of the different types of entities, what they are, what they feed on, because there are different types of entities that feed off of different types of emotions and behaviors. And these entities have a certain type of ego. So it's like being a hostage negotiator. You have to use different tactics for different psychological types of entities in order to release them from the client and then help the client heal. And once I built up all of this knowledge and I got to a point where I was like, I think I've got this now. I know there's always lots more that anybody can learn. and You're always going to be learning. You're never going to be an expert. But I think I know enough about this now to help other people to understand it. And I remember a client showed up at my door pretty much the next day. And the entity that was attached to this lady was top of the tree in terms of what controls this world. And this entity basically came to my house to parlay with me to basically say, don't do it. This is why we need to be here. This is why we need to stay here. This is why the humans need to be controlled. This is why you all need to stay doing what you're doing and we need to stay where we are. And at that point in time, when that particular entity turned up to speak to me and, and I have to, you know, give them their due. It wasn't done in a scary manner. It was done in a very much, you need to listen our side of the story manner. After that meeting, I realized this is real. This is happening. Everything that I have built up in terms of my research that I've tested on multiple clients globally as well, because by that point I'd stepped into the global space. So I was working with people all over the world and people were flying in to see me internationally face to face, but I was also doing sessions online globally as well. So I knew at that point, yeah, this is what I think it is. And I need to start teaching other people how to do this now so that slowly, if I create a huge group of people who can all do this, removing entities. If I also provide training and teaching 
to humans who just want to know how to remove entities from themselves. If I also create a course for parents so they can take entities off of their own children. If I create a course for women who've not been able to get pregnant because they've got a sacral demon that's stopping them from getting pregnant because they don't want their food source being taken away by a baby. If I can educate women and men in that area in regards to procreation, if I can do all of these things and spread that out throughout the world, then we might stand a chance as humans of taking our energy, our life, our light, our souls back and for once being at the steering wheel of what we do as a species instead of being manipulated like puppets energetically and therefore emotionally and mentally by these beings that have got their hooks into us so deep because of the way this world is really structured and run. That's what I would like to raise awareness of with humans throughout the world is that this is so much bigger than anything that we've been told or led to believe. So much bigger. And we have to master our emotions. We have to master our energy. We have to bring in the light in order that our frequency rises so that these beings, once our frequency is high enough, they can't come anywhere near us because they can't touch us because they vibrate too low. But the way we get to that place is to unpick ourselves first. We've got to unpick the damage that has been done in a very systematic, compassionate, methodical manner We've got to all help each other heal. We've got to raise the frequency of the energy back within us again and sidestep these beings. And when we do that, we'll plug back into that positively polarized upper dimension once more that we used to be able to see. So that is why I feel so passionate about this work because it's so big. It's so much bigger than anybody can comprehend. But the way we help ourselves as a species and help each other is to face all of those traumas that we faced as a child, because that's where it begins. It begins right at the beginning as a child. You've got to map it all out. You've got to see, okay, that trauma put me into abject terror. That will have affected my root. That's a tick in the root box. That, when that happened to me, that made me feel so sad. And actually thinking about it, I've never been the same again since then. Okay, that's a tick in the sacral box. You've got to work out where your energy is vibrating lower. We take those entities away that have got in due to the trauma. We remove all of the density that humans are carrying. And we do that through psychotherapy at the beginning of the sessions. We do it through hypnotherapy. And the results of working with the human being under hypnotherapy to remove trauma is astronomical because you're working with all of the minds and the soul and the spirit and your supercomputer which is your brain which is at the driving wheel of your experience is involved in that process in the hypno in the hypnotic process so when you come out of hypnotherapy the entities have gone you've had your psychotherapy at the front end that's helped you release all of the trauma in regards to your childhood and you know adulthood as well you've had some really strong suggestions done under hypnotherapy to help you heal you've had the neural pathways in your brain realigned so that they're no longer trying to cope with the trauma that's there you've removed those entities that are talking into your mind, telling you the low frequency thoughts, you know, just kill yourself, just take the drink, just hit the person. Those thoughts are not coming from you. They're coming from your attached parasites who want to be fed. And they feed off of the emotional release that happens when you do these low frequency things. Just like the guy that you were talking about at the beginning, he, he put it together 
that he's got this parasite that needs feeding. And it is. People that have got one, they will feel that urge at the same time of day every day. You know, people all over the world will say to me, I can't sleep at night time. I've got all of these things going on in the day, but then at night time I can't sleep. And the reason they can't sleep in the night time is because they've got an energetic parasite attached that is not prepared to wait eight hours before it gets fed again. So it will give them a really bad nightmare or it will give them chronic pain all the way through the night in their teeth or and that tells me they've got a throat parasite or in their stomach, which tells me they've got a sacral parasite so that they get fed during the night. So you've got all of these damaged people, physically damaged, emotionally damaged, mentally damaged and energetically damaged people walking around the world trying to cope with all of these symptoms and thoughts and feelings whilst their parasite is living the high life because the the energy parasites live in the dream they're getting all of the energy the human's miserable but the energetic parasite feels great and at certain times of the day it's feeding time anybody that's got an addiction will tell you that that it gets to a certain time of the day and there will be that edge there that budge that, that buzz there that needs that something that needs to be scratched you, you can't describe it and it's because it's got to the time of the day when the energetic parasite's gone right i've used all of that energy you gave me last time i need some more now crack on and if people understood this in a bigger way wow what a transformation we could have on the planet just imagine if all of us at the same time understood this information understood how big it is and understood that we could literally evolve our species into a higher plane of existence just through doing this work absolutely laura listen we there's way more um stuff i'd love to discuss with you i'm conscious of the time i don't want our good friends out there to have too huge a podcast to consume because they might go i'll watch that later and then because of the hecticness of life that later doesn't come and i'd like everyone to watch this so what we'll do if we we round this up here um can you spare 10 minutes to come over to our locals platform and and um have a chat there with our um, locals friends it's a free speech platform that we've got we've got some great supporters over there um, we're all, all on this journey and we can ask them a few questions Laura and, and um, um, that would be wonderful um, so let me just round up here though so friends at home if you could like and subscribe would really really appreciate it um, Laura's link all laura's links will be below but there you go look there's laura's uh, youtube channel um what else am i saying um yes and just so m massive thank you laura just just stay on the line i'm going to play us out um but fa absolutely fascinating chat and uh it it all resonates you know some stuff you know I think for people out there, you've just got to listen to all this information. You don't have to put all your all your chips on one square. And um, but after a while, you do sort of build up a picture, or at the very least, you build up a you know a, a, a schema in your mind of how this thing could be working because it really does. You know, if you can frame it in terms of the parasites, then then you know what you're dealing with, don't you? You know, it gives you a starting point, and 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 there's so many um, people struggling at the moment. So you know, we said the veterans community, and and so many veterans. It's you know, we joined up because we had quite we were escaping damaged young lives, um, and of course that doesn't get dealt with while you're in the military and so you leave and then suddenly all this unresolved trauma that you've never had to deal with because you've been 
you know, traveling around the world and being a soldier or whatever, it, it suddenly gets dumped on you again. And this is why we see people struggle. So, Laura, massive thank you again. Friends, Laura's details below. Massive love to everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. Because I've been living life right like I can.